Right, episode two with Mitchy Moo. Mate, <laughs> let's get straight into it. So Alrighty. we didn't get to get into the stuff that I wanted to last time. We were even having a chat mm. in the office yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we did. Got um got a few talking points to get through today. Um, I even remember when we came into the last one, we had a bit of a pre-chat for the last podcast. Like, it'd be good to get into some, you know, the darker stuff and a few little struggles here and there. But obviously, yeah, we went on too many tangents and we, got, we hit the tangent train. But it was still yeah, good. It was great. I actually am so happy with the response uh, from the last podcast. I must have been pulled up by 20, 30 people yep. telling me how much they enjoyed it, which actually really was special to me because I actually thought people were going to be listening to it. Oh yeah, cool. And then that was going to be it. Yep. Um, but but this is this is what I think is extremely important. So many people undervalue their own life experience. Mm. Often we, you know, we look up to people on social media or so many other influences in our life or the way that we get inspired, but we often don't take the time to go, I'm actually mm. worthy and I have experience and I have stuff that deserves to be shared and can mm. empower other people and that's what you're experiencing. And so many people experience it when they get off the podcast because everyone's like, I can really connect with that, I can relate with that or, mm. mate, it's so brave you sharing that and yeah, various things like that, which for me then goes... Told you so. Literally. <laughs> like, like, I say that, but <laughs> told you so. But, but it's like when I caught up with Ollie, um, I pulled him up at work the other day at Function Well, and I was like, mate, like the amount of relation I got from your um, knee injury story for my own and, you know, depression, demons, all that sort of stuff. And I just sitting there listening, it, uh, listening to it and I was like, holy fuck, like this is just really hitting the nail on the head when it comes to how I felt. And yep. um, he articulated it so well that I was just sitting there listening to it. It was kind of like, I feel very connected to that. And it was really um, good for me to hear that too, because I saw Ollie the other day training, doing whatever, just getting amongst it. And I was like, oh, I love seeing that someone who's like been through that and they're doing what they want to do. They're doing what they love. And I always like so much more observant of that now because I'm like, I, I, I almost need that. Yeah. Cause I need that. Cause I've got so many doubts and, um, and shit when it comes to my own knee and my own injuries that I'm like, fuck, I've, don't know if I'll ever get back to that. But yep. then you see that happen, you go, oh, fuck, mint, that's awesome. Um, and that's the thing. So many, like, majority of things that we experience throughout life, someone has gone through yep. and conquered before. But obviously when you're in that 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 dark place when the demons do arise, mm. etc., you feel like you're all alone and you're the only one who's ever gone through something like that. It's because we mm. put those, the, you know, the blinders on and just consume ourselves in what we don't now have or the problem in itself rather than putting our head up for air or mm. um, looking to the left and looking to the right mm. to go, and, oh, fuck, he's been through it, I've been through it, let's pick his brain. Or mm. even still, like when you can get a few runs on the board, you can sit back and go, okay, well, if it hasn't been done, for example, if someone hasn't overcome, which I would find very unlikely with 7 billion people around the place, it's like, well, what has to happen in order for you to be the leader in that space? Exactly, yeah. That's a really good way of putting it. And I think that's one thing that I've been um, finding more and more of with each new episode that comes out of this podcast is each each guest, there is one or two or three snippets that just resonate with me so much. Like with Dane, so much of what he said when it came to relationships and with Emma when she talked about being busy and yep. being uh, and glorifying the hustle. And yep. I was like, holy fuck, that speaks to me so much. And with Ollie with his knee and, um, uh, and Sam, just talking about Sam with – like with everything Sam had to talk about, like it resonates with me so strong because yep. I'm a trainer and I love training and it's my it's my passion. So it's one thing that I've been finding with each new episode. I'm just like, that right there is speaking to me on a whole new level. And when you get out of your own head and you um, stop your own language and your own voice and you hear it and you hear someone else articulate it, yep. it it's, it's like this whole new like light has been shined on that topic because you're like, oh, I didn't think of it like that or mm. I, I love the way that that sounds. Yep. And it hits you so much harder, which is great. That's, you know, when we first started men's circles back in like 2017, that was what I originally sought because I, I knew after I just obviously started reading books and listening to podcasts mm. that there were bound to be people in my local, in mm. the local, you know, our Newstead for us that could help me or help me articulate what I was mm. feeling. And because often, you know, if you don't ever practice saying what you want to say. There's so many people who are limited by the fact that I don't know how to say what I want to say and that there is a first fucking mistake because you yeah. never flex a muscle. Yeah. You never throw the words out there. You never write the words down and then can formulate and restructure mm. uh, your deliverables, right? How you want to uh, articulate yourself. So by being in a room or like we are in the academy or even at Function Well, being around people who 
are doing that, mm. you can sit, like I don't even have to hardly speak. Mm. Yep. And with a lot of the people that I surround myself with, often I don't because it's like I just am so so in such awe with how people are communicating about certain things and how they speak about it that I'm like, it's just piecing together all the shit going on in my life, as you mentioned. Mm. And yeah. I'm like, this is, I'm eternally grateful for this because next time I experience this or if I go home to journal and brain dump, I now have a new way of structuring what's going on in my life and making yeah. sense, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a <laughs> tangent I was going to go on just before and I was Take like, I was, I was so like in to what you were saying. Um, it's all right, I'll come back to it. But yeah. Let's dive to the deep stuff, bro. All right, all right, all right. So when I first met you, so you've been a part of the Man at Camp Project for four years. Yep. So just real quick. So you said you started in 2017. Mm. So I saw I knew one in 2018. That makes me feel so good. You're one of the yeah. OGs. One of the OGs, bro. I think one of the OOGs is Dave. Um, yeah, right. Is that Wayne. who's in this morning? No. No. Oh, okay. Um, I can't remember who was in this morning. But so I, not because I don't care. It's just my brain is frazzled right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, what yeah. day is it? Uh, no, but Dave um, is one of the OOGs for the for the man at CAM project. Mm. Um so you're, you're up there as well, mate. One of the longest yeah. serving members. Yeah, oh, I love that so much. Product love, of your environment. Yeah, and it's definitely shown through with the um, the person I was back then. A lot of drinking, a lot of drugs, a lot of just really making a lot of bad decisions and a lot of uh, harsh emotions, things that like led to um, you know self-abuse and things that led to um, suicide attempts, things like that, that all just... Um, over the past four years and things like that has come about in a way that's like, I look back on it now and I think, oh, I was still a, even though I was 24, I still look at it, I'm like, kind of like, oh, you were still just a child. Like you were still just. Legitimately. Really, yeah. Like I think about now, like, and like I said, like in the last podcast, the last six, <clears throat> to, six to eight months has been the time in my life where I've just been like, time to be a man. Time to be a fucking man now because you are really... But when you say time to be a fucking man, what does that mean to you? Like, what does that look like in your world? Well, like I said, with the uh, with the injury when I was off, I was relying so much on my partner and I was, um, like I said, I was just had my head in the sand. I was ignoring so many of my own responsibilities. But once um, that ended and I was on my own and I was looking around, I was kind of like, fuck, I am not looking after myself. I gained a lot of weight. I'll just show you this photo of me that was taken in December. Yeah. Um, bring I'll it up. Bring get it, it up. up. Um, and I was gaining a lot of weight. I was drinking all the time. And I was just like, I stopped caring. I stopped putting in all this effort and it really showed. And that's when I was just kind of like, time to be a fucking man because you can't keep doing this. This is actually really toxic and really bad for you and your, um, and your potential progress that you can make. Yeah. Because I was just like, I don't know. I was just putting so much blame on all this other shit that I was like forgetting to take my own responsibility. Mm. Um, this photo right here that was taken in like December. Wow. Yeah. On a, for those who want to see it, it's on YouTube. I've got the phone to the screen. Wow. Maybe you'll even do a little reel for this, Mitchy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll, just I'll send, send it, it to me and I'll post yeah, it. I'll send that to you. I'll send it to you now while yeah, I think about it. it. Um, um, but like that, like that literally was like, I was fucking drinking so much and I almost went back to drugs. So fucking close to going back to drugs. And um, that was actually... Why were you drinking so much at that point? Oh, I just fucking... I, I was just tired. I was just so tired all the time. And I think because when you're tired, you almost like... You, you want to lay down and go to bed, but you you almost feel bad about doing it. So when you go to bed, you're almost like hyper... Like you... Yep. Oh, fuck, I'm almost awake now. So when I was drinking, I would go home and I was drink and I would be focusing on the drinking rather than focusing on, you know... Um, being a better person or, you know, trying to pick myself back up after the breakup and the knee and the blood clots and all that. Um, I just put so much, like I'll, I'll actually go through probably a bottle of rum, bottle and a half of rum a week. And for me at the, at the time, that was a lot because I was only having like an so hour. So in any fucking yeah, standard, right? Like I was going and buying, cause only like 55 bucks. Well, how much is in a, how many standard drinks are in a bottle of rum? Like 40? 40 is it? Well, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just, wow. <laughs> you, you keep talking. I'm going to. Um, so yeah, I would go and buy, because I get paid on Friday. Yeah. I'd go and get one on Friday night and I'd often have to work a Saturday morning. Yeah. But what it would be like, all right, cool. I've got a bottle of rum. I've got a couple um, bottles of Coke. 
um, I was there with my roommate and I'd be like, all right, cool. She's gone off to see her partner or um, she's away for the weekend. 16 standard drinks. 16 standard Sorry, drinks. I was well off the mark. Shows I don't oh, drink enough. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just half. Um, and then Saturday, or Friday night, Saturday night would be about finishing that bottle of rum. Yep. And then I'd go and get another one to have of for a night time through the week to get me through that week. And then it'd be like, um, so I got closer to Christmas and I remember a lot of, a lot of clients – um, unbeknownst to them this is something I really appreciated by the way if you guys ever watched this brought me a lot of alcohol <laughs> as gifts so bottles of rum Jim yep. Beam which is just fucking oh, yuck but I drank that yeah, yeah I was like I, drank I thought anyway. you were about to praise it I was no, like mate I might have to move is. your chair yeah, away yeah. A bit. <laughs> back a little bit I'm from Warwick so Fair they'll play. drink anything um, but beer and rum and Jim Beam Jack Daniels um, I even got um, shop buckets and things like that so I was just like yes give it to me and I was like drinking it all. Yep. I didn't care because I was, there's so many times and a few of the clients, if you ever watch this and you think about the times that I rocked up those couple of minutes late and I wasn't very happy, it's because I was hungover. Mm. Yeah. I was just hungover rocking up to a gym to be the standard, to be the pinnacle of what you should be. Look at the, yeah. look at the ripple effect of drinking. Like I, mm. I'm more for going and have a good, having a good time, but nothing fucking annoys me more than someone who is struggling with their mental health or they don't know where they want to be mm. in their life. And I continue to take the easy route. It's like, let's just drink. Yeah. Let's just drink. And yep. I speak to so many people every week and it's such a common thing. And my first thing is give up drinking. Mm. Not Maybe not forever, but mm. for the foreseeable future. And they can't do it. And I understand there's addiction, there's dependency, there's all these things that are around it. So it's a bit more complicated than what I'm just saying. But if you were to just focus on that, you would be able to work through it mm. and create a new habit or replace the habit of drinking with something else. For mm. me, it's exercise. And yeah. while all addiction is not awesome, mm. I'd much rather be addicted to exercise yeah. and drinking yep. and uh, you know consuming recreational drugs and stuff like that. So if you're in that position, first step, cut the fucking drinking out. Yep, absolutely. And I can't stress that enough. I cannot stress that enough because it was something that you, like, you're in the middle of it and you're in your head. Like, there's a thing, thing in your head like, why are you doing this? Don't do this. And you have another sip, have another sip, have another sip. And you just keep going and going and going. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm asleep now. Welcome tomorrow. She'll be right. She don't even night. sleep well. All this mm. stuff around people thinking they sleep well from alcohol, it's proven that mm. you don't. It's easier to get to sleep mm-hmm. for some people. For me, I sleep like a brick anyway. But mm. your actual quality of sleep is terrible. Not to mention the caffeine and the coke yeah. and things like that, the sugar and the fact that your body – goes into this hyper hypersensitive uh, sorry hyperactive state because it's like holy fuck I'm being poisoned I've got to get rid of this shit real quick yeah. so it starts going into overdrive so every time I drink like I, I use this whoop oh you got a whoop band as well right mm. so when you see from nights after you've had alcohol it's always like literally 8 to 10 beats higher for mm. my resting heart rate yeah I don't know what's, what's going on I don't like drinking alcohol much anymore I had a few beers on the weekend and I only had about 6, 8 beers um, with some of my friends and my little brother and I had the most splitting headache and I was so sick. I was like so nauseous from these six drinks that I was like, oh, I'm done. Like I've, I've, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Like, and I find that now so much that when I drink now, there's something that I have that happens in my body that when I have about four or five beers, I'm like, yeah. I'd, I'd find a, I'd, I'm going to go throw up. Like I feel real well, sick. When you think about it logically, you're poisoning yourself. It would yeah. be literally like me saying, hey, have a bit of rat sack. And there's no difference. Yeah. Like if you have one yeah. pellet as opposed to 10, you're still fucking eating mm. poison. Yeah. It's the same with alcohol. Mm. It's just society has made it the norm, mm. which once again, I'm not bad. I don't mind mm. drinking. Yeah. But yeah. when you think about the negative ripple effects that it has, it's fucking stupid. Well, it's funny you say that with the social norm. So when we did the first game plan, uh, sorry, 12 week game plan at the start of this year with no drinking, mm. I... I almost made it. I got very, very close. I had a couple of drinks at um, a concert with my mum that I went to, and it was fine. Like, what I was, concert did you go to? We went to. Um, it was called the like a big the big bash or like the big rave, yep. where they have a DJ play like the so like a festival. It was kind of like a festival, yeah, but nice. it was like for people over fifty. <laughs> so it was like the sixties to two thousand twenties music, yep. and they played all the best hits. That would have been amazing. It was just a great day. I had a fucking fantastic day, and you wouldn't notice how sunburn I was in my head. It's yeah, I, I remember when yeah. I said something to you. <laughs> That was a sunburn. Yeah. Um, but it was a good day. And I, but that whole time, so so many people in my life were like, oh, we're going to go drinking. I'm like, I'll come, but I'm having Coke Zeros. Or I'm having water. I'm having a Coke or, or a Sprite Zero. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you're not drinking? Like, it was weird for me to not drink. Yeah. And 
the whole time when I was not drinking, like the amount of people who were like, oh, oh, you're not drinking. Oh, like just got stumbled across, across their words. Um, and it was like, I, I don't see the, what the big deal is. I'm going to have some Coke Zeros. I'm going to have a fucking good meal with you at the same time. I'm going to have a good time. I'm not some weird dude who's like, other, yeah. I'm preaching about some other fucking thing. I'm still going to be me. But no, I wonder if that is just an Australian cultural thing. Mm, or yeah. and for anyone listening from wherever you're tuning in from, if it's if you feel like it doesn't happen where you live, let us know. Mm. Uh, yeah. I know in France, like it's a completely different relationship with alcohol. Mm. I love how they, mm. um, you know, make experiences with it. It's not about even for New Year's. Amy, like Amy, and I went over and had uh, New Year's with Etienne uh, two, three years ago, or something mm. like that. And literally at 12.05, Amy's like, are we doing the countdown and all that sort of stuff? So it's like, no, it's just a long day. You go to each individual place, get your wines, get your champagnes, mm. get your breads, get your cheeses, all that sort of stuff. And yep. then just have a nice long have a conversational nice. dinner for five hours. That's cool. Whereas for yep. us, it's like, we don't even really eat. Let's just don't get eat. a lotto. And I'm going to go ahead and just say, scientific, scientifically proven, that about 78.394% of Australians do not see 12.01. On January is that, 1st. Is that? No, no I just I made like, that up. I just made it up. A, that's a very, very accurate stat. No, but I, I would just, I'd be confident. If someone were to go and do the stats, I would be confident to be around that figure. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, I just, even for me, I'm like, for what purpose do I want to stay up for mid? Mm. I couldn't give a fuck. I'll celebrate yeah. it in the morning. That's like, right. I want to yeah. wake up feeling good, not wake yeah. up going, I haven't seen I haven't seen New Year's in a, in a few years, but the last time I did, like, I was struggling to get to 11.59. And as soon as the 12 one hit, I was like, Going to bed. See ya. See yeah. ya. It's a it's an interesting mm. concept, but let's uh, let's continue. So you had a, you mentioned a couple of moments ago, and I guess before we dive into suicide chat and suicide suicidal ideation and suicide attempts, for anyone who is struggling, obviously seek professional help. There's so many incredible um, lifeline. Uh, well, lifeline is one of them, but yeah. like call lines out yeah. there, helplines. Um, lifeline being 13, 11, 14. You can call that if you do need help or even just, you know, read, build build those relationships, check in on your mates, yeah. uh, all those sorts of things. There's so many powerful warning signs like relationship breakdown, financial struggle, bereavement, and there's just so much that you can look for if yeah. you're wanting to build a good quality um, relationship with your mates and make sure that everyone's doing well. But yeah. over, to you, over to you and your experiences, because we were even talking yesterday and you were like, I've mm. written this suicide note at the yeah. start of the year. Yeah. That's fucking four months, four, pretty much four months ago. Four months ago. So I wrote it to keep in my pocket. So I wrote it to, to walk around with. And that sounds so weird, but to me it made sense. Um, so I'll go through like in chronological order. So leading up to my very first attempt was in 2015. So 2015, um, to get to the end of the story, but then to talk about how I got there, I eventually, I actually, my, my blue you. Um, I actually went down to, do you know, um, past Victory pocket? It's like, uh, is it Jinder Lee? Uh, I don't know that area too well, but yeah, let's just assume it's, Jinder I think Lee. it's Jinder Lee and there's a Jinder Lee boat ramp and you can go down there and it's a really nice boat ramp that has a really nice car park. People launch their boats off in there all the time and they're jet skis and you've got like a nice little Isle of river. So I got really plastered one night and I was like, fuck this, fuck everything. I got drunk one night and I drove my car into the prison river. So that was what happened. But it wasn't until the water started coming in that I was like, I don't want to do this. And I like ran the car into reverse and thank fuck it actually got out of there because otherwise it would have been a very different story. So just down the boat ramp, you just went... Pretty much. It was like a, probably like a good 20 meter run up. Run up. Yeah. I just was like straight in and hit the water and I had my seatbelt on. And it fucking jolted me. And then as soon as the water, I was like hit the water, I was like oh, this is happening. And then I, the water was like a little bit coming in the door and I was, <gasps> and I like ran the car in reverse and yeah, fucking floored it out of there. And I just sat back there and I like, and I think I told you the other day, I went home, none, no one was the wiser. I went home and I went in bed and I like laid awake all night and I was just like sobbing in my bed all night. Um, so I can't believe you. So your car didn't like drift or anything? Just no, it was a very calm, still night. And yeah, when I got in there, because I think it's like a, like, a lot of boat ramps go like that, but this one here is like kind of like longer. It's like very more like, I, I want to say an acute angle. Is that yep. what it is? An acute angle? I think it's more like an acute angle. So yeah, luckily, 
luckily that was the case. Otherwise, it'd be a very different story, and you might have a different guest here today. So, what was what was going on, like in your life at that time that had you to that point? Like, if we can even look at like things, was there relationship breakdowns? Was there um, financial stress? What was going on for you? So it was a world of disappointment. Yeah. So um, I felt like a disappointment. So um, growing up, um, I don't mean to t- talk ill about my my, my father, but um, when it comes to my parents, we, we had this conversation a little while ago about how our parents or our, 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 you know, our father's ideals get projected onto their kids. And if you aren't like that, then you aren't exactly what they want. So um, growing up, dad was always like, you're going to grow up, you're going to get a trade, you're going to get married, and that's it. That's life. So growing up, I was like, I don't really know if I want to trade. I don't really know if I want to do that. I really want to go to the army because I would love, because I was a very timid person. I was a yep. very, very timid kid. Um, and I found a lot of that intimidation and things like from like things like bullying. So bullying was quite harsh in my schooling because um, we went to, a, I think I went to nine, to, nine or 10 different schools in my life. So we moved a lot. So when you go to a new school, you get hazed and you get like bullied and you, or whatever. And you really make a lot of friends. And we, and that happened a lot growing through school. Yep. So, um, that's probably like where a lot of my um, social awkwardness comes from, a lot of that. Anyway, so when I graduated school, I was like, I want to go to the army. So I tried to get in the army. I tried for well over a year and a half, but then I got rejected because of my ear because I'm deaf in my right ear. They don't allow that. Um, and then, all right, cool. So I continued with, with my butchering trade and I actually ended up getting a trade. Now at the time, I was like, mm, I don't really know if I want to do this. Like, this isn't really what makes me happy, but I'm going to do it because this is what life is meant to be. You get, you grow up, you get a trade, you get married, that's it. Yep. So I was believing that I was like in this, right, on this right path. But then as the years sort of flowed through and I worked at that job for four and a half to five years and then, um, yeah, I was like, I'm really not fucking happy. I want to actually go down and do something different. So I moved down to Brisbane in 2000, at the end of, two, start of 2015. So I moved down to Brisbane here and I started looking for a job and I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to get a job and then I'm going to like go and find a passion. I'm going to go find something. Then at the time I was like paying off a car debt as well. So I had like a lot of money coming out of my account um, and all this shit. So um, when I found this job, I found another butchering job. And in that job, that was where like this plummet, this plummet of darkness, uh, it's, it's plummet into darkness came uh, came about. So... I was already disappointed in myself because I wasn't living the life I wanted to live and I couldn't find another job because I needed to spend a lot of time at this current job to pay the bills and all sort of shit. And Did you feel trapped? Oh, fuck yeah, massively. I got I actually deleted a few statuses on my phone. I should have shown you them. I had one status on my phone the other day that I came up as a memory where it was like, um, my heart tells me that I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but life is telling me I'm going nowhere fast. Mm. So I was like, holy shit, that came up and yeah, it was a good memory to look back on. So the boss that I had at the time was quite actually uh, abusive and I was still only young. I was still only a 21, 22 year old. Yep. And um, he was quite a intimidating person and would come around all the time and be like, oh mate, you're fucking better off dead. Like all this shit. Let's say actually legit right hand of God would say that. Um, that is fucked. Oh, that's, that's like, uh, that's a lot of toxic butchering. you thinking about things like when you used to, uh, you know, I do, do remember saying from time to time or having people say to me like, kill yourself. Like, obviously you don't mean it in that way at the time, but how it can be interpreted oh, is yeah. exactly that. Especially on an impressionable weak oh, mind. Mate, like, definitely. Someone who's already thinking it. Like, <clears throat> Yeah, it's just, here's another thing that I can use to validate yeah. right, my, like, my belief. Oh, you think I should? You think I should? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so working there was very, very um, harsh on the mental health. Yep. And it wasn't until I had one day where I was actually thinking about, so where the house we were living in had a top deck, and I had a, a balcony and I was like, if I just put a noose on there and I just jumped off, how would that go? Like, but then I was like, I don't want anyone to find me. How could I, how could people not find me? So Why didn't you want anyone to find you? I didn't want people to see that. I didn't want people to be like, fuck, I got to cut him down. Um, I was living with my cousin and his roommate at the time, which is a good friend uh, at the time. And I didn't want them to have to have that yeah, scar yeah. and that image in their head. So I was thinking about them. I was thinking about my siblings. Uh, I was thinking about it all. But um, I was like, yeah. Even just when I hear stuff like that, though, it proves to me that while you're in the headspace that you're in, which mm. is 
once again, there's n- a lot of the time there's not much people can say. It still proves that you have, you know, you're, you're caring nature and mm. all these brilliant qualities about yourself mm. that obviously you can't see in that moment. But for me, yeah. it's just like, well, the fact that you care about that shows that you're a good person, shows that you have potential. Mm. And I, it's, it's just like, I wish people could see that when they're going through that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate they saying that. Um, but th- I remember this one day. So <laughs> being a butcher and really struggling, I didn't even know I had depression. Yep. I didn't even know I had it. I didn't even know that I was going through it. There was one day I was legit cutting up on the table and I must've woke up 30 seconds later. I went into this trance. My, my vision went black and all I could think about was cutting my wrist right then and there, right then and there, down the long ways, no coming back from that, right then and there. And then I was like, I woke up 30 seconds later, I was like, oh, I better go back to work. Went back to work. And I was, that, was, that was the first, I was like, oh, that was, that was intense. Mm. That was like a proper like vision of me doing it. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, so <clears throat> there was the, that vision and then the noose vision and then there was just constant like degrading myself. Like I wasn't earning a lot of money. Um, I was struggling with rent and um, internet bills and I was struggling with like uh, my car payments. I was behind in everything. And um, one thing that, like, I don't want to put any blame on anyone here. This is something that was just my own thing. I saw people around me having a lot of success. Yep. And I was having any success. Um, <clears throat> anyway, and then in that time, there was like a lot of drugs, a lot of, a lot of smoking weed. I would, go to, I would go to work high and drunk like all the time. Cutting up things on a bandsaw. I'd be like fucking like, oh man, I shouldn't be doing this. I'll be, uh, we would get blaze like fucking, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 plus times a week. It would always be happening. And I was always, I was always drinking. Anyway, that was By going- eight, nine, ten plus times a week. You mean yeah. multiple times a day, right? Oh, you God, didn't have yeah. a 10 day week that I don't know about. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> nothing like that. It's like, give me yeah. the time. Give man. me the time, mate. Um, no, no, it was all the time. It'd be like, there's a bit left in that fucking cone. I'm going to take that real quick. Um, at 4.55 a.m. before I go to work at 6.30. Um, just, to, yeah. just, just to get a buzz on, just to fucking not feel yep. for a little bit. And that was what was going on for quite a while, which is really bad for the headspace. Anyway, got out of that job. Got out of that job eventually. So that boss was so toxic. He was such a toxic person. So what happened was um, he's facing cash, right? <clears throat> and there was one day where I was like, man, I'm struggling for money today. I've got to pay my bill at 3.30. Do you reckon you pay me my cash like for my, my weekly pay like now? And I'll go bank it and I'll come back real quick. He goes, oh yeah, that's fine. Gave me like my four weeks wage with like still like that a Friday afternoon and that Saturday to work. Packed up my gear and went home. I just like went home. I was like, you know, this is my little fuck you to you. This is my little thing. Um, Cause he was such a toxic person. Yeah. I was like, I need to, I need this little win. Um, And then we, yeah. And then after that job, I got a different job and then. Oh, so you never went back after that? No. No, I was gone. He called me up a few times and I was just kind of on the phone. He's kind of like, you want something? Like, what's going on, mate? He's like, you took my money. I'm like, did I? You paid me. Like, you gave me the money. Like, anyway, it wasn't a good thing to do, but at the time it felt right. Yeah. Um, anyway, so after that, <clears throat> a few months went by, working at a different job. And then that is when I eventually was just like, I'm so fucking done. Because I was having like, my, my depression was like actually rubbing off my roommates as well, which is causing our relationship to break down a bit. Yep. And then there was that. And then there was a lot of other things that was going on in terms of like struggle with money and the family that I was just like, I am, I've had enough. Like I, 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 can't, I can't do this anymore. And that's when I drove down on a Saturday night and got drunk and I tried to drive my car into the river. Yep. So. Thank fuck you hit reverse, man. Because yeah. it, it's been... And I don't want to speak without the reference, but there has been um, things to show that, like, when a suicide attempt goes down, a lot of the time, for the, from a survivor's perspective, they have that mm. moment where they go, oh, fuck, what am I doing? Mm. I want to live. And it's yeah. just, like, whether it's snapping them out of a funk or whatever whatever that is for the individual. And that's why, like, you know, Wes, who it was a big reason why the Story Bridge has the cages over the side yeah. right now, yep. is because they They've proven that. It's like and they've got can, the um the lifeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. if you can pr- hold someone for a minute or whatever and just let let them sort of mm. um have it, like go through that emotional. I know that that it's sort of like that moment you went through when you hit the water and you're like mm. fuck I don't want to do this. Yeah, 
if you can create that for mm. them in yeah. a safe safe way, um, you can save a lot of lives. Yeah, and it just shows love. Yeah, like and it shows the possibility of love, like a stranger. But just, it also just shows where people can get to, and I think a lot of people don't understand that. And I, one of the the most frustrating things is people go, "I understand that." It's like no one understands what you. I don't understand what you went through. Mm. I can. Mm maybe relate to certain things, mm. but I don't understand what it was mm. like for you. No one fucking ever will. Yeah, and that's the same with me with other people. Like, <clears throat> I have my experience and everyone else has their experience. Yep. Um, and that's something that's unique to it, I guess. And um, something that... <coughs> pardon me. I think that's something that really um, like resonates with, like, with you internally where you kind of like... You, you almost go through this like journey of thought in about three seconds. Mm. This whole thing. And that's what happened. And I was like, oh, fuck. And then I put the car in reverse and got out of there and went home. And then it's such like a, it's like doing a massive big deadlift. <laughs> like, <laughs> like dead set. Random comparison. Random comparison. You do like a 500 kilogram deadlift and you put it down and you see your central nervous system is just like, I'm Fine. cooked. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was like. We've been building up, there's a physiological response to, mm. to, uh, guilt, pain, shame, embarrassment, all mm. that sort of stuff. And if you've been carrying it around to the point where you're going to do something like that, mm. harm yourself, when it releases, mm. your body's just going to be like... And that's what happens. Floods happened. over yourself. Yeah. I was flooded with emotions. Yep. And I was so glad no one... Because at that house, we were all very open. There was nothing wrong with coming into your mate's room at like 11pm yep. being like, oh, bro, we're going to get on. Do you want to yep. come out and have a few drinks? Like there was nothing wrong with that. I'm so glad that night that didn't happen mm. because I was like a mess. Yep. Um, so fast forward a few years and this is one extremely toxic relationship later. Does no, I just want to ask uh, what happened next? Like what were the next steps for you from that moment to yeah. sort of build yourself back up? I think, um, so or did you build yourself back up or I think it was, it was, a, it was a scare. It was almost like a big horror scare, like this frightening thing. Um, and you, you kind of like, oh, I don't want to feel like that again. Like, oh, that's really terrifying to think about now. That, that, that's in your history now. Like that, yep. That's something that, that's a chapter in your life that you always have. And it's scary to think about. Like, even now, talking about it, I'm just kind of like, oh, fuck, it's uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like that little scare on the, on, onto the right path. Like, it's like that scare that really put me like, okay, okay, what can I do now? And that's actually when I, when I found um, PT, like when I found becoming, uh, in going to fit college yep. to become a PT. And I was like, all right, I've got to do this. This is going to be something that I can really do. So I started really focusing and just sinking my teeth into becoming a PT. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, you created purpose for yourself. Yeah, I created, because I, created, I was just busy. Like I was just busy. I wasn't even training. I was yep. um, completely poisoning myself all the time. And I was just working. So I was like, I need another purpose. And that's when I found becoming a PT. So like I was just fully immersed into the modules and fully immersed into, you know, becoming that because I love, I still loved fitness. You know, I still played football. I still did all that competing beforehand. But um, I was like, oh, maybe I could do this. And that's when I found getting to things like Spartan racing. Mm. So I put myself on a new trajectory that was healthy. And thankfully this new job that I was at allowed me to do that. Not working like 12 plus hours a day. I was only working eight hours a day with all this free time, mm. it's like, oh, there's a gym over there. I can go to that gym and train. Or my friends are going to go to a Spartan race. Maybe I'll train for that. So and I'll, I'll book in for that. So I think it, 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 before that, before that driving the car into the river, if you said, hey, you want to be a PT and do you want to go train and go do Spartan racing? I was like, no, I'm pretty good. Mm. I'm all right. But then after that, it was like, this seems like something I would really like to do. This seems like something that I could be really good at. So I think that's a good thing to become aware of is like if you're feeling stuck or in a rut or anything like that just go do I was listening to a podcast a couple of weeks ago and they're like just pick eight things Mm. eight things that maybe you will be interested in maybe you're like you don't know until you try it and just go do them within a month so it's Mm. going to be a busy month but then when you experience them ask yourself one did I enjoy that and would I like to continue doing that you're going to get a yes or a no Yeah. secondly from that it's like if it's a no well what was there anything that I liked about it or what didn't I like about it? Yeah, yeah. And you're going to be building self-awareness mm. and gaining a greater understanding of who you are. This is why, like, you know, they say that um, life's, uh, what's it? Yeah, life's really wasted on the youth mm. because we don't have the self-awareness. We don't have the understanding, the experience, the knowledge that you get as you go through life. Yeah. 
which would make being a you know, young guy fucking so much funner because it's like yeah. you don't waste your time on the things that aren't important. You don't mm. sweat the small stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so moving forward, so I think it's important that we, you know, like I said, if you're lost, confused or any of that sort of stuff, grab eight things, get it done in a month, give yourself yep. some feedback and then do more of what you like and start building from that because as you said, the getting into the healthier lifestyle then connected you with people who were doing Spartan Race. Some people mm. might not have that in their environments. But then you start hanging around people mm. who are like, yeah, I'm fucking keen for that. Yeah. Or yeah. I'm keen for this. Or they might introduce you to things, right? Yeah. Which is yeah. amazing. And it wasn't until I did my first Spartan Race that I actually did really, really well. Yep. Um, it was 28 kilometers on the day. And I think it was 46, no, so that's 56 um, hurdles, uh, obstacles, because I yep. do two, two obstacles every kilometer. Yep. So, um, yeah, I got through that, and I think it was like four hours. Yeah. Like, and to me, I was that was like a really good. Like, I was supposed to be there all day. Yeah. But I got through it in like I think it was like maybe three hours, fifty five minutes. I can't remember the time exactly, but I got through it so much quicker than I thought I was going to, and I was so proud of myself, and I was so happy with myself that all of a sudden, this like this gym that I was training at, it had all the right stuff. So I started putting a lot of energy into training for that to do yep. it again because I was like, I want to keep this you feeling. Get some good feedback. Yeah. Good I chase. Got some, yeah. Um, and a friend of mine, um, Jess, we, were, we did it together. Uh, another friend of ours, Clayton, did it as well. And we all just had the best day. It was such a great day. And um, we we're like, oh, we're gonna, we got to do this again. we got to do it again. Come on. Why the next one? Yeah. Mate, one, and this is the thing, right? So many people set a goal. Mm. They often uh, change some of the behaviors that they do in order to achieve that goal. They may eat healthier. They may cut out drinking or various things like that. But what happens when the goal finishes? For mm. most people, they don't have the next goal. Mm. So they go revert back to the habits that they had prior, which is why most people do amazing in six-week challenges or 12-week challenges and then mm. they, their life goes back to not being as great as it was. Yeah. So it's important once you achieve a milestone, mm. what's the next thing? Yeah, Continue to grow, continue yeah. to challenge yourself, continue to create direction for your life. I think it's important to have that milestone in the future before that first one even finishes. Yep. Um, I love that, that overlap. Like, like we finished the game plan and we were already talking about the next game plan before the game plan even finished. Yeah. And I love that because that's what people really need. They don't just be like, okay, cool. Like, like you said, 12 week challenge, 12 week challenges done. That's it. Go back to your normal habits, go back to your normal eating, go back to the way you're exercising before. Done. Like it doesn't we work. Need to. It's a band aid. Yeah. So when it came down to it, we were already, we were already looking at like, Oh cool. Spartan race does, um, Brisbane, it does Gold Coast, it does Sydney, it does this, here, 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 here. And I was like, let's book in for them. Like, let's put them on our calendar. Let's train for them. Let's, yep. let's save money for it, you know? And that was what was really helpful too. Like you just said, people don't have that second milestone and they need to. And we, we were already doing that. Yep. Yeah. It's a key takeaway, man. Mm, 100%. Takeaway. 100%. And I was so grateful that, grateful that we did too. But the only problem was when I became a PT, I was like a string bean. Hey, I was so lean because I was built for running. Yep. And I was so skinny. And I was working out at this one gym and I was trying to like get clients. Yep. And at the time, this is when like bodybuilding was like back the in its boom. Ducks nuts. Oh, mate. Trying to get a client. <laughs> that was impossible. I don't hey. get how people get into yeah. bodybuilding. It's just one thing I've never, mm. never gravitated to. I, I did it because I didn't know of other styles yet. Yep. So when I first started going to gym, back it was like 2012 and I went, started my first Anytime Fitness Um me and my mate, we were going there all the time and we were just doing like, we were just going there. One, it was a social thing. Yep. So, Keep your answer. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. And two, was, one was a social thing. Two, it was fucking um, a de-stressor from work because he was a boiler maker. I was a butcher. So big, yep. long um, uh, days of work. And we were also like, oh, cool. We're losing weight. We're gaining muscle. We're getting more confident in ourselves. Yep. Why wouldn't we keep doing this? Yep. You know? So, and then it wasn't until I found out... so when I found out about your more functional sort of training and your endurance training for things like ultras and, and Spartan races, I was like, shit, I want to learn more about that. And thankfully I did too, because I learned a lot about it in um, yep. fit college. Yep. And I was like, cool, I'm going to apply this to me. And then not long after that, I found CrossFit. So it's expanding. Dun, dun, dun. I know. If I can suck me in. Sucks like, everyone in, doesn't it? it, it I heard it siren call <laughs> and I listened to its song and I was like, mate, I am hooked line and sinker for this sport, for this style of training. Yep. Um, and that's when I went to Cross the Cooper Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So fast forward, like you said, you were saying before, I sort of backtracked you, and no, that was good. I'm glad we got onto that because I, I don't know why I just brushed over that. Yeah. But so then, where we got to, well, um, 
You were saying a couple of years later? Yeah, so a couple of years later, and um, I was in this toxic relationship, and it was really, really bad. And um, all the time, there was a lot what of- What were the warning signs that made it top toxic for you? Well, f- for starters, my- um, Like, one thing I hate, one thing I- I don't hate a lot of things, but one thing that really grinds my gears, if someone calls someone else, oh, you're pathetic, or you're small, or you're a weak C-U-N-T, yep. I really you hate that. Can't. I we cunt and I fucking hate that. She would do that. Yep. And she would be like, like, I know you hate being called pathetic, but you are pathetic. Like, and I'm like, oh fuck. And then I would almost feel like, holy fuck, like this is my fault. This yep. is fucking I am a bad mm. cunt. Like I, I am fucking causing all this shit in this fight. And I was just blame myself. And that's why I probably stuck with her for a little while because I was just like, I don't know. I was just fucking in this in this weird. Were you dependent? Probably dependent. Probably like um I don't know. I got no idea. It was a very different time, very different Mitchell. If you were yeah. to know, though, so. if I was to know, it'd probably just be um, guilted, yep. like very guilted into staying. Because um, I remember I tried to leave a few times. And Guilt's an interesting thing, though, that I think we choose to hold on to. Everyone has permission to let go of it. So, mm. as much as it, you know, you can talk to all the right people. You can do a lot of that stuff. For me, from my experience and my belief around it, is you got to make the decision to let it go. Like, why the fuck are you holding on to it? Is it mm. to punish yourself? Is it um, makes you feel like you got something, maybe, a t- you know, attaching yourself to a victim mm. victim mentality? What yeah. is it? And so, like, guilt is something that we need to learn to let go of to mm. live a better quality of life. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I was guilty. Like, I was feeling so guilty. Or every time I'd be like, you know what, I'm done with this relationship. There'd be, like, this guilt thrown at me. I'd be like, oh, fuck. All right. And you'd stay, you'd do your thing. And like, I never let go of it. Like it'd be something that would always be brought up, brought up, brought up to almost trap me in a little bit. Mm. But not, not to completely like blame, I'm 100% at responsibility as well. Yep. Like I know I wasn't, I was in a bad time and I um, was still a piece of shit as well. Um, but once that ended, it ended in a horrible, horrible way where her and her family were just like, nah, you, I fucking, we all hate you. You're a fucking C-U-N-T, like all this sort of shit. And um that, so I'd gone to um, get help from a, from a counsellor and they got me onto some antidepressants. Yep. And I told them about how I, I sometimes get these panic attacks. So I had one in the middle of a dance club one time, horrible, horrible experience. And I didn't even know what was happening. I just like was like, fuck. Mm. And I was so like, hyper, I was hyperventilating, I was sweating, I was, you know, I was blown away by this feeling of anxiety. I told them about that and they gave me antidepressants and they gave me Valium as well. So when the, when the breakup happened i ended up moving in with a mate and again lo and behold patterns do ensue where i started drinking again and i started getting into that really um self-loathing kind of cycle of mentality i was at home oh at my my, my mate's place and it's valium but it was like diazepam so it was like i don't know a, a, a minor smaller you know hit of valium and i was sitting there and i was drinking this bottle of rum and I was almost finished with it. And I was like, oh, I'd take a couple of pills. So I ended up taking like 12 or 15. I can't remember. I ended up taking like a lot. Yeah. There's like a, a whole. Yeah. What are they called? Like a, a strip of pills? Like one of those, yeah. a whole one and plus some more. And I was like, yeah, I'll go to bed. If I wake up, I wake up. If I don't, I don't. And I went to bed. I woke up and I was like, I guess I'll wake up. So it was kind of like a, ah, oh, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. That one was um, not as heavy as the first one. Yeah. That was just kind of like, it wasn't planned. It wasn't anything like that. It was, like, it was just kind of like, in the moment, it's kind of like, oh, I feel pretty shit. I'm just going to keep doing this and see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. See what happens. And um, I woke up the next day and I got revved. I got so in trouble by my mate because he went in there. At the time, he was one of my really good mates. He went in there and he found the empty strips of the pills. Walks in. He's like, what the fuck? Why is there an empty bottle of rum? Why are all these pills gone? What did you do? And he like gave me a fair ripping. And I was like, oh, I needed that. That was good. Like, I needed that. And um, pulled, me, pull, pull, pulled my head in pretty quickly. And um, yeah, so that's when like I started like getting myself back on a good track again. Because I, again, I'd stopped training. I'd been shit. I was um, suffering with a lot. And that's what started me in this new relationship, which was great. It really put me on the, on the right yeah. path. <clears throat> um. And yeah, that was great. But I was still like um, margining my 
shit mental health into the start of this new relationship. And um, I remember there was one time we went to like a family gathering and it was a great night. Everyone had a great time. Went home. I was just standing there. She was standing there. And I just broke down in tears. I don't know why. I just broke down in tears into her neck. I just stood there, stood there and cried for like 10 minutes. I don't know why. I just did. And it was just so like, I don't know why. I, was just, I just broke down so, so much. And um, it was all this like overwhelming emotion all the time. Like, oh, fuck, I just hate my life. I hate me and I hate all this shit. Um, was it a cry for help? Or? I really don't know. I, I really couldn't tell you. I think it was kind of like a... Well, what came from it? Like, did you just feel relieved to let it all out or... I think it was actually that. Yeah. I think it might have been that actually. I never really thought, thought about it until now. Um, that, yeah, when I was standing there and I just broke down in tears. I think it was at the time, like it was like a holy fuck, I can be safe here and I can let, let it all out and I can do this and this is great because I haven't cried in so long. Yeah. You know, I just got it all out. Mm. Emotional management, bro. Yeah, it was like that. It's so important to have a space, even if it's for yourself, like in the office, or whatever, whatever it is, just have a space where you can mm. actually just sit there and think, contemplate how your life's going and if it gets emotional, it gets emotional, but... Mm also feel comfortable to let it out because if you continue to bottle it up it's like fucking boiling water with a lid oh, on it and eventually yep. it's going to start going sh- pretty much yep and you got fucking yeah. boiling water everywhere it's spilling on the other shit it's fucking and this ruining is, the steak you know and- this is why because a lot of blokes don't know how to do this this is why like men's groups are so powerful um, breath work's becoming so powerful uh, and, and so even like programs like the, the, the Strong Men of Value is because you're putting men in environments where it's spoken about, they can learn the tools mm. and, and ways of doing this and mm. they can learn to, I guess, step in or lean into the emotions that they're experiencing and, and be vulnerable. And there's nothing fucking more satisfying than just letting the pressure valve mm. off. And yeah. Just yeah. Walking out yeah. feeling energized, focused and clear for the first time in a long time. Yeah. It, it's one of those things, it's one of those things in your head it's just rick- ricocheting around all the time. It's just constantly like going around all the time. And then when you get into like a men's group or you get into a safe space and you start to vent a little bit, the ricocheting and, and all the noise just becomes a little bit less and less because you're getting it out. Like you're, you're venting it and you're... And, so, and lifting the little bit. Lifting the lid off. That steams valve is, out, yep, steams out. Steam out, steam out. Like and not ruining all the other shit around. You're not getting mad. You're not bloody ruining situations or friendships or relationships yeah. you're doing in a healthy way because the person across from you or the person you're with or whatever you're doing it's it's one of those things where it's like hey i know like yeah l- l- when you're when you're finished i can tell you my story like i can i can yeah. you know tell you my part yeah and i love that and i think i had a conversation with that someone really recently and they were asking me about the man in Canberra day and i said bro i guarantee because he was telling me about how he was struggling, and I was like, "I guarantee, something you're going through, you, you put a you put a um a message out there, or you put a post out, and I guarantee, at least one to ten people will be like, bro, <clears throat> send me a DM or send me a number, I'll give you a call. Yeah, because you just know that there's gonna be one person out there who is struggling with that exact thing as well. Yeah, uh, or who has struggled with that exact thing. You know, and it, and it creates this. It's like it's reciprocal because one, someone's getting to vent what they're going through. And from the flip side, it's allowing someone to give. Mm. Right? And when you give, it's the most rewarding feeling of all time. Like it's impossible to be upset and frustrated when you're walking away going, I just you know, had the most incredible conversation. Mm. I gave them advice. Like, yeah. I feel empowered now. And it's this incredible reciprocal relationship now that's being created. And it's free. Like people mm. can connect. It's just having the space and learning the tools to do so. It's an unspoken two-way street. 100%. Like, unspoken. Like people don't need to say... Um, I'm giving this information for this. It's not a means to an end. It's just a, here's some help. Mm. Here's some advice. Here's what I would do. You know, um, it's like what Ollie said last week. He's like, I can't guide, I can't, um, you know, hold your hand and carry, but yeah. here's what I do and here's what helps me. Yeah. And, and I hope that helps. Yep. Um, if it doesn't, keep looking. Keep like. looking. Because like, it's like, um, it's like, it's, it's like with PT. Like, you're not going to nail the program every time on the first run. You put them through it the first week. Hey, that didn't work. Let me go and fix it. Like, I love doing that all the time. I'd be like, hey, this is just the trial we're going to use. And then next week, if you didn't like whatever you, you didn't like, we'll fucking go through and we'll do it yep. again. Start again. Start again. And we'll find what works for you. 
Yeah. And I love that. And I love the fact that, um, like, that you can be confident in yourself to do that. Like, you, you, you love that you can be like, fuck, like, don't just be like, that didn't work. I'm a failure. I'm failing. You go into the spiral. Yep. And like, that didn't work. What else can I do? What else can I search for? And a lot of that's conditioning though as well. Like, you've got to, if, if that's the way you react or respond to situations like that then you need to take it back a further and go mm. why am i talking to myself that way mm. what are the what is going on in my in in a dialogue that that's my default response yeah or even if it may be your, always your default response but why am i not following it up with something mm. better yeah something more empowering and that's mm. when you then got to go okay well maybe the issue is i need to address how i fucking talk to myself yeah maybe i need yeah. to start finding worth in myself i need to get start gaining evidence to support the beliefs that I want to have about myself. Mm. and But unfortunately, a lot of people have lost the ability to question things and they've also lost the ability to answer because it's so common for people to go, I don't know, and yeah. just get let off the hook. Yep. It's like yep. challenge yourself or hang around people who will challenge you to come up with an answer. Mm. Even if it's wrong, it's still better than nothing because mm. now you've got something to work with. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's how you grow. And you've got, you've got to have gotten that from somewhere too. Like, 100%. And you, when, when you got that from, you, you reach out to that source. Because you're like, holy fuck, that I like that. Like that is what I need to pursue right now. And you yep. reach out to that source, and most of the time you'll get a response. Might not get it back, but it's, once you get a ballpark of what that thing is, you be like, cool. I'll find another avenue for that. I'll find another source of yep. that. You know, and um, which is really good because I was just thinking about it just then. Um, especially with like, I, I know me, but I know like a lot of cultures, they find um a lot of value in um, what's what's the term for it where you like you put yourself down but through humor uh, through humor oh, well, uh, fuck. I was going to say nagging but it's it's belittling yourself yeah like say, belittling yeah. yourself through humor and I did that and I know a lot of people who do do that and then when they say all the time it's kind of like are, are you being serious like is that a joke or are don't you being serious talk to yourself don't like do that. that like and I then said that to my mother-in-law this morning she oh, said something I was like yeah. Why the fuck would you say that? You would never yeah. say that to anyone else. I've had people call me up on it so many times because I'd be like, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just a dumb cunt. And they'll be like, why would you say that? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, because then all of a sudden- It's conditioning. It's conditioning. But not only that, the, ex- the response you were expecting was a laugh. Yep. But they've just called you out your bullshit. And now you've got to be vulnerable. And now you've got to be like, oh, I have to tell them something real. <laughs> yeah. I have to be real. Fuck, I can't, I, I have to be serious. Yep. I can't just hide behind humor right now. And then, yeah. And it's going to get found out because people can see through that in a fucking second. Yep. Yeah, which is great. I love that. Definitely. Mate, we're uh, f- flying through time as well. I'll, um, I'll go th- I'll just go through one more. Oh, mate, 100%. I just so um, how much time we got left? Oh, a couple of minutes. Cool. All right, I'll go through this. So I want to talk about the suicide note that I wrote at the start of the year. Yeah, I want to hear about it. So when it came to um, me dealing with a lot of the things that finished off last year, yep. um, I had a moment where I was like, you know when like you're like, I don't, I don't really like how I'm acting right now. I don't really like what I'm doing right now. I had a moment where I was like, I fucking hate myself. If I was another person and if I wasn't me and I met me, I wouldn't be their friend. Like I wouldn't be their mate. I wouldn't want to do anything. I wouldn't want to have anything to do, anything to do with them. That's a pretty tough thing to say. That was a real, really strong passion of not liking myself that I had at the time. <clears throat> and it was something that I was really like, and that's when I wrote it. Mm-hmm. I wrote it all but then right as we were going into the 12, first topic game planner I wrote how can I not be that person how can I be someone who I like how can I be someone who if I was another person and I met me I would like that person what would that person That's look a great like great question like if I how am I going to act from now on that just emanates who I really am and who I can be that's why I wrote it and that's when it put me on this like this journey now this year's journey which is going a lot better than I thought it was going to go. And have you binned the note? Have I binned it? No, yeah. I've still got it at home. Yeah, I've still got it. It's there. Um, it's all written in a, in, a, in a journal with a lot of other stuff. And I think, yeah, eventually I'll bin it, rip it up, throw it away, burn it, do whatever the hell I have to do with it. But it was one of those things where I was like, cool, that's a reminder. I need to become someone who I want to fucking be mates with. But why don't you me. make the reminder that you want to become someone that you want? Like, why don't you make the note about, like, you mm. know, that's where visions come in. Yeah. Helpful. It's like you're writing your future self if you want that to be the reminder. Because if you keep, if you, from my experience and opinion, if you, you know, there's pain and pleasure that motivate people. But if you're using pain, obviously, 
you know, for me, it was always I wanted to get as far away from possible, uh, as far away as from that version of myself as possible. And I held on to that, and that was still a part of my identity because mm. I still spoke about it a lot. Mm. And all that was doing was holding me back. Right? Whereas now I talk about who I'm going to become or where I am yeah. now, right? Yeah. And I don't fucking really ever think about it unless I'm sharing sharing a story, but it's not there to go, this is the reason why I've got to get up every day and do this and yeah. do this and do this. It's yeah. like the reason why I'm getting up every day is because I'm excited about the possibility. I'm mm. excited about the opportunity. And I think so many people fall back because they don't let go. Yeah, yep. Right, yep. And that's why I challenge you to fuck that note off. Yeah, yeah. That'll be, I'll send and, you a video, I'll be burning it. And right, and right, right. <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah, like it's yeah. once again, just writing a note is not going to fucking change your life, but it's mm. much nicer to read about the opportunity and the, yeah. the possibilities for where you're going and what you need to learn and how life's going to turn out for you than yeah. fucking reading something that's not that, that way inclined. Well, it's like people who, like you said the other day, you were like people live with their head turned backwards because they're fucking holding on to that. Yep. Like, oh, I can't do this because this happened and it's fucked me up and I can't hold on to it because I'm going to use it as an excuse or I'm going to use it for my victimhood. Yep. That's what I was 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 doing. Big emphasis on the big fucking capitals yep. of WAS was doing. And now it's like, cool, I'm looking forward. And like like you just said, I'm waking up excited. And I, I sent I sent an, uh, an email to Darren the other day. I was like, mate, hands, hands down, best fucking place I've ever worked at. Like, I legit get up and get, and yep. get excited to come to work. That's the fucking first for me. Like, I love that. I love fucking getting ready to go for a 12-hour uni session. I love that. Yeah, That's me looking forward. That's what's being Exactly. Like. Mm. And that's you, but... Once again, you've got here, if you look at the last, what are you, 28? Yeah. Yeah, so look at the last 28 years of your life. There's been ebbs and flows, and that's what fucking life is. Like, mm. there is no one who has a clean run, mm. right? So for anyone who's going through a tough time at the moment, that, you know, as much as we all wish we could help you through it, it's like, that's there for you for mm. a reason. Yeah. Right? Mm. The goal is to, who do you need to become to get out of that? Because who you become in the process is going to get you ready for the next step. Mm. And this is how you've learned to get to a point where the first time in your life mm. you're fucking stoked, like completely yep. stoked. It's yep. taken 28 years to get there. The other thing is you may not stay there, but you are now aware that it's possible yeah. for yourself. That's right. That's exactly right. And I know like, okay, cool. If I'm having a, a, downward, a downward time, it's like, hang on. You know what? You are surrounded by amazing people, amazing influences, like, Utilize that. Don't like just fucking Instagram be the Instagram influencers or just no, influencers. No, in no. like fucking Lockie Stewart and the like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, just like, when I say influencers, I mean like, um, like training and just like, mm. and love of life. And like you walk down the street and you can see people who are happy and you can see this, like, go fucking touch some grass because people spend too much time in, inside. Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. You know, and I love that. So, and that's what's going to be the, the new thing. Like not taking drugs, not fucking drinking all the time, not getting to these fucking like self-loathing episodes, it's, okay, cool. What can I do to get back to where I was? I was that really fucking tall and I'm going to fucking stay there. Like, yeah. That's what it's like. Yeah, brilliant. Man. I love that. And thanks for so much for coming on and talking about that because it's, you know, as we said, Lifeline, there's Black Dog Institute, there's so much professional help that, you know, I highly encourage people to go get mm. get into that because, it, you know, you'll look back and go, I'm so grateful I did that. And it's also not a sign of weakness. It's, we're looking to level up always and I always have my hand up because there's things that I need to work on and I need to improve on and a lot of it I can't do by myself. Yeah. Right, so mm. it's needing the support of other people. So thanks for coming on to talk about that, mate, and burn that fucking letter. Mm. And, yep. you know, yep. it, it, grateful that you're still here because you've yep. got so much to offer and as you said, there was 20 to 30 people who came in and spoke to you about the last episode. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to have more from this one. Even if there's just one. Yeah. I would love that. Even if there's just one person, that still makes my heart fall. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. We'll see you guys in the Strong Men of Value Academy. And remember, I've been finishing the podcast with this. Yeah. Do something today that's going to make you better for tomorrow. I love that. That's great. Appreciate it, brother. Let's go for a steak.